Howdy, howdy, and uh, welcome back to the uh, final part of this lesson. So we're finally there. We're going to be talking about the classic first program, now in C++, Hello World. Again, I'm going to focus on the composition um, of this program. We will get to the actual compilation pipeline of turning this high-level C++ code into um, executable um, binary later on in the week. But here's how it looks in C++. We see some sort of include statement at the top. We see some sort of function. We see something being written to standard output, a return statement, braces. There's a lot to decompose here. But the output of actually running this program is simply hello world. So let's start out at the top. Pound include IO stream. Why do we need this here? And what we'll see here is this is a preprocessor command. And you'll, by the end of the week, you'll know exactly what a pound includes doing. But we'll do a little bit of hand weavy right now and just explain why this is needing here, needed here. So standard IO is not a part of the core language of C, but it is going to be provided by this library. Therefore, and consequently, you must explicitly include that library in order to read or write to standard, to standard uh, input or standard output, respectively. And what we'll see here is writing to a files, uh, writing to files or re um, reading from them, those processes are going to be defined in a different header file, as they're known. And we'll see that that is going to be fstream. But we got a little bit of time. Uh, before we get to that, you'll see it, I believe, by the end of the week. Okay. All C++ applications, so executables, must have a main function. And the reason being is that each of our C++ applications begins by calling the function main. And this is going to serve as the entry point into our application. So this is going to be required. Um, you know, in practice, we're going to see a lot, um, you know, a lot more functions defined, um, user defined. There's going to be a whole, you know, lot of things that are going to go into a working application. But the one thing that's going to be common, you know, to all of them is going to be this main function that will serve again as the entry point to where that application will begin execution from. So uh, I don't have my highlighter, but here, I'll go ahead and highlight that. So if we just look up at um, the function signature, which would be main, and then the empty parentheses, empty parameter list, to the left of that function signature is going to be the return type. So in this case, it's going to be main is going to return an integer value. We're going to explicitly return the value of zero, typically at the end of our main function. Zero, when returned, communicates the successful termination of the application. Why this is important is, let's say you have another application that is going to essentially execute this one. In order to know whether or not this application succeeded, that application needs to receive some sort of value back. So conventionally, zero uh, signifies all went well, and a non-zero value signifies that there some sort of error happened during the execution of that program. So again, this is convention, and I believe as one of the recent versions of C++, this explicit return statement is no longer necessary as it is implied. Okay, so braces, what are these? They're simply going to denote a block of code. And as we'll see when we hit the expressions and statements lecture, it's going to denote a compound statement. Here, the braces are simply going to encompass the body of the main function. And when I mean the body of the main function, essentially the definition of that function. What happens when that function is invoked depends on how it's defined. Okay, so now looking into the body here, we see this std colon colon c out. 
I'm going to take it as a whole at the beginning and then we'll break it down into kind of what's going on. What is, what is that uh, colon colon? What is STD and what is C out? But together, this is going to be defined in IO stream. And it is simply an output stream that is bound to standard output. That is the connected text terminal. So what we'll see here is I can launch my C++ applications, at least in this class, it'll be uh, always through uh, the terminal. And when I do that, essentially C out is going to be bound to that connected text terminal and any output that my program generates will be um, shown there. Okay. What you're seeing here boxed is going to be the insertion operator. This is an operator and it's used to insert objects into an output stream. Here, we're inserting hello world into C out. And that's essentially causing hello world to be written out to standard output. I'm not going to get into how these are kind of chained together, but essentially kind of going from, I guess, left to right, what is first inserted into the stream is going to be hello world. And then after that is inserted, essentially this is what's then left to be inserted into the stream. And then this STD and L is inserted thereafter. And I'll get into what that means here momentarily. But again, moving from left to right, we're just dumping those objects um, into the output stream. In this case, it's printing, printing their values to the terminal window. So hello world as you can see in the output. So there's also some double quotes here and you know what's what's the meaning of that? In our C++ application, double quotes is going to de denote a string literal. Single quotes is going to be a character literal. Okay. What is this endl? This is also defined in IO stream, so if you don't uh, pound include that header file, you won't have access to this. And all this does is it terminates a line. Uh, it, well, it does a little more than that, but for now you can think of it as simply terminating a line. So why this is kind of has a lot of empty space here is because it the uh, hello world is inserted um, into this stream. We see it printed here. And then what happens thereafter, we insert a line feed and that would mean our cursor is directly below the H at that point. So it's just simply hello world line feed. And the line feed again by endl. Okay, so what is this STD that's prefixing both C out and endl? This is simply going to denote in this case that the particular entity, whether it's endl or C out in this case, has its definition in the standard namespace. And that's what I'd like to leave this at at this point. But we'll see namespaces are highly related to scope. In fact, they define a scope and we'll get into that soon. So um, I guess that's all for the uh, kind of walkthrough of the classic first uh, program. We're going to get into a uh, couple more topics uh, before we get into the actual compilation pipeline, uh, but that'll happen soon. In the meantime, I, if you're interested in setting up your development environment and beginning to actually say compile code, the directions uh, to do that are actually in the syllabus. syllabus. We will be walking through um, the actual development environment uh, during the first discussion section, uh, kind of pointing out uh, some of the bells and whistles within that. But I would strongly encourage you to at least go through the setup uh, before that time. Anyways, I hope this uh, you enjoyed this first walkthrough, the first lesson of its whole. I hope you found it productive and beneficial, and uh, I'll see you all tomorrow.